So what are the three things you can do for liver chi stagnation? Hi, welcome back to the Chinese Medicine Podcast. I'm Marie Hopkinson, I'm a Chinese Medicine Practitioner, and we're gonna talk about liver chi stagnation. So what are the three things you can do for liver chi stagnation? The first one's singing, second one's laughing, and the third one's exercise. Now I'm gonna go through these in more detail as we go through and tell you how these can help you um, to offset these, these symptoms or the, the aspects of liver chi stagnation. So just to recap, if you didn't watch the videos before, liver chi stagnation kind of causes like that tightness and that um, like annoying sort of feeling in the hypochondrial area. Because it's related to the gallbladder channel, um, you're going to get these kind of tightness and like a he maybe headaches, things on the side of the head, um, tightness and, and soreness in the neck, um, shoulders, particularly headaches and associated with that tightness. Um, tightness in the in the lower back and things like that. Now, um, if you haven't, if you've got symptoms that are undiagnosed and you haven't been to your GP or to your Chinese medicine practitioner, or you haven't had those things professionally checked, then this is not a replacement for medicine. Um, this is not a replacement for you, for your individual diagnosis and going to see your practitioner. So please make sure you do that. Um, don't use YouTube videos as as a replacement for your doctor. Um, but this may help you with some of these symptoms and alleviating some of these things. So especially if you have pain and you don't know what's causing the pain, you need to go to your doctor or you need to go to your, um, your Chinese medicine practitioner and actually have that, or whoever your natural, your, your healthcare practitioner is, you need to go and see them and um, you know, see if they, they need to refer you to someone else or to help you make a diagnosis. So um, what can we do? We can do singing. So singing helps by moving qi, moving air through our body. Um, it helps by alleviating the tightness that you may feel around your diaphragm area, so the hypochondrial area here at the side. So if you if you poke down the middle of your chest and you sort of feel where well, your ribs come up and meet, that's the epigastric area, that's the stomach area. So just to the side of that and you feel like where your ribs are underneath that, just on top of your ribs, underneath your ribs, that is the hypochondrial area and that's where the liver chi stagnation usually happens. And why is that? Because it's related to the gallbladder channel which really, if you watch the other video, talking about wood stagnation, it's more the wood element stagnation. So whether you want to talk about it as liver chi stagnation or wood element stagnation, um, that's what we're talking about here. So why does singing help? Because your diaphragm's here, and when you sing, you're using your diaphragm to kind of move air through your lungs and you're facilitating that movement. So if you don't have to be a professional singer, you don't have to do it um, singing in tune um, for it to be um, beneficial to your body. So just have a good sing, find a song you love, sing along to it, go and um, join a group with, of singers. Um, there's lots of different ways to do that. And then you can access that aspect of community within that as well. Now, secondly, the other thing that you can do is laughing. Now laughing helps, if you have a really good belly laugh, you are going to use your diaphragm as well. And that helps facilitate movement through your body. Now, the other thing that laughing does is it helps us mentally to actually deal with the stress. So one of the things with liver chi stagnation often is because it's that wood elements needs, uh, because the wood elements meant to be providing that movement, that free flow, and there's no free flow, that often leads to like mental stagnation. And at least to people experiencing symptoms that they would associate it with stress. So they'd say, oh, when I'm stressed, I get a headache. When I'm stressed, I get tightness here. When I'm stressed, I get sciatica, or I get pain down my legs, or I get um, pain around my ribs, or I just feel uncomfortable. Or you notice that they'll sigh a lot on the things that they're stressed about. So I have patients, I'll say, oh, how's things going? Oh, well, you wouldn't believe this happened this week. And well, Johnny, you know, it really annoys me. Or your friends might be sighing a lot like that. Just so if you listen out to when people sigh, that's telling you what they're frustrated about. Texas, that's what a governor gets to do. There's differences. What's, stag what's causing that stagnation for them? Um, hopefully they're not sighing about you. But um, it, when people are sighing, that's, that's, it's your body's natural way. And sometimes people just can't hide it. It's trying to release that. It's trying to release that tightness in your diaphragm and under your ribs and try to move that, that, that cheek. So... Um, when we're laughing, that releases some of that like mental frustration that kind of builds up with, with, with things associated with the cheese stagnation. action. So what can, how can you do that? You can think of something funny. Um, you could um, like go and watch a comedy video that you love. Like it doesn't have to be a whole 20 minutes, half an hour video. It could just be five minutes, three minutes, um, 30 seconds. Something that makes you laugh, something that breaks the monotony. So if you've got a really stressful job, you're dealing with stressful customers or people in your job, Hello, IT. Have you tried turning it off and on again? Um, stressful boss. Okay, we're oh. trapped, everyone for himself! Okay, let's go! Let's go! Get out of my way! Okay, okay. Something like that. Then 
and, and you need to get your work done, you're like, I don't have all day to just stop working and <laughs> have a laugh, um, then just have those things ready to go. Have those video clips ready there and then you can just press play have them on your phone or somewhere like that. Um, you know, I often have stuff, you know, on my iPad because I travel a lot and then it's there and I don't need the internet to watch it. It's just there on my iPad. And so that basically just breaks up the stagnation and the monotony of things. And then you can, you know, like it just alleviates the stress associated with that. So that's a great way to um, like relieve the mental stress and also that physical aspect through movement of the air. So you've got singing, you've got laughing. And then the third one is exercise. So what kind of exercise do we think is good in Chinese medicine to do for liver chi stagnation? Well, firstly, things that, mo that are moving your body. So just the movement of your body. If you're not very fit, you don't do much exercise, then just start with walking. Don't overdo it, don't overstress your body. If you're not sure if you can do exercise, if you're overweight um, or you've got health, other health issues, go and see your doctor before you start doing an exercise program. But in general, moving your body more than you were before is going to help you um, alleviate some of that, that, that those symptoms. It's better to stand than sit. So think about what are you doing all day? Are you sitting all day? Are you standing all day? So if you can create a sit-stand workstation, so you can buy these much more easily than ever before. Like you can buy little desks that basically prop up on your desk and then you can do your standing. If you're a student and you've got to do a lot of like reading or um, you know uh, researching and you're on the computer a lot or you're the other thing is you, you, when people are on their iPads, like look at my posture right now. So I've gone from standing like this to like my shoulders are hunched over. And when my shoulders are hunched over, it's going to affect my the trapezius area, which is definitely your gallbladder channel, but also your rhomboids, which is kind of, go back to my little boyfriend man here. So your gallbladder channel comes at the back here, goes across the, here to the top of your, your shoulder, and that's your gallbladder 21, Jing Jing. So that point is often associated just right here with a lot of stress and tightness for people that have, have liver cheese stagnation. But if you're if you're studying and you're and you're or you're sitting on the couch, a lot of people do this, they're watching TV with their eyes, but they're but they're sitting there on their device at the same time. And so they're looking like this. And if you're looking like this, you're hunching your neck over and that's gonna affect your bladder and your gallbladder channel. So because we're talking about liver cheese stagnation, um, the, the other one here is, is this rhomboids area that gets affected by you're pushing your arms out all the time. So either you're reaching out to be on a keyboard, um, you're reaching out to like you basically, if this was my iPad and I'm holding it here, like you're hunching already just to be able to, to be able to do that. And then you're often pushing, putting your neck down. So posture is important. I know a lot of people are becoming more aware about that now because we're using these devices much more. Like we use them for work, we use them for recreation, we use them for sleep for some people. Um, so be, be aware of how much you're on that device and what that's doing to your posture. So stretching is good, okay? So if you're not good, not if you feel like, Marie, I'm not a good exerciser. Um, <laughs> I should be, but I'm not, I'm not a good one. So start with doing some stretches, start with doing some walking, and just, ta just pace yourself and build up to what you can do. Um, start with standing more than sitting, finding things in, the, in your day that you can do standing. Now, um, you'll find a lot of people with liver cheese stagnation are those ones that love the gym. Um, you know, you drive past those 24 hour gyms at night and there's that one guy on the treadmill. Say my name, you know who I am. At 11 o'clock at night, well, he's probably got, in Chinese medicine, we would say liver cheese stagnation. Not 100% not sure, but I would be highly likely because if you have cheese stagnation, you ha it's, it's like you've got a lot of energy to burn and your body, and your body it's all bound up and, it, and you kind of need to kind of get, get, get it moving and you feel good from exercising like that. However, the detriment of exercising too much and sometimes because you've got that cheese stagnation, you feel like I want to do and I feel good and, you, and, you, and, and it's, it's, a, it's, a, it's a, again one of these things that's like a balance. You've just got to find the right balance there. Don't overwork your body too much. That would probably be the, um, the difference in Chinese medicine to other systems of medicine. So if you're overworking your body a lot, then <clears throat> you're, you're basically wearing, wearing down its ability to, um, to last the distance. So you're, you're decreasing your life force. Um, so sweating is a detriment of exercise. When you, when you exercise, you sweat. And when you sweat, you're uh, drying your muscles out. And so that essentially dries your body out. And that's why a lot of people get pain and cramps. Um, after exercising now there's things you can do to mitigate that obviously you know people take different supplements and minerals and things like that 
I'm not going to go into the details of that and obviously hydration is important and all those things but at the end of the day if you're exercising too much it could be in a detriment to you so in a Chinese medicine sense you see a lot of exercises a lot more um, taking they take a lot a lot less toll on the body so Tai Chi Qigong um, the martial arts type of exercises are generally um, you know they're using a lot of like muscular movements and a lot of stretching and things like that but they're not over tolling the body such as like like doing deadlifts and things like that is definitely going to overwork your body and you might end up with a very fit looking body in a western sense but you may end up you know with later on in life having some serious um, issues with your muscles and with dryness and things like that um, and that's just something that people have to reconcile about what's you know the best thing for them so we're talking about liver cheese stagnation here today so what are the three things you can do singing laughing and exercise now from a foods perspective there are some foods you could use which help that wood element do its job and, and keep that and keep that movement so one thing is pungent foods now you don't want so much pungent that you're sweating um, so pungent is like cinnamon ginger garlic basil um, even mint is pungent, it's a cool pungent, but I would suggest you go more warm pungent. So those warm pungent foods help wood. They facilitate wood to kind of do its movement. Now, if wood moves more and more and more, that pungent flavor, if we use a lot of pungent, then that can make you sweat. And that's what we use when you've got a cold or a flu. Now, you don't want that just happening all the time, because again, like the exercise, it may make you, it, it, will, it will deplete you unnecessarily. So some people will find they have a lot of stagnation. They're like, oh, I feel really good when I eat a lot of curry. Or you tell them, I'm hungry, it's good. They're like, oh, yeah, I eat a lot of curry. Is that good? Okay, so not like a tinderloo that's making you sweat and, and making you very, very hot, but just mild pungent and keeping that pungent in your diet will de generally help with cheese stagnation. Um, and so that those things are good. And, and avoiding foods that create damp will, will also help. So if you haven't seen my videos about dampness, there's a few dampness and diet kind of videos that will help. So if you if your if your system is already constrained with liver cheese stagnation, and then you also start eating a diet that's highly dampening, um, then that will that will tend to make it worse. So people who have liver cheese stagnation often feel not so great first thing in the morning. They feel oh it's very sluggish, hard to kind of get up and, and get moving. So um, it's good if you do regular exercise, and that can sometimes mitigate that that effect and help people feel better first thing in the morning and just keep things regular. Your body essentially likes regularity. So these are the things you can do to help liver cheese stagnation. You can do singing, laughing, exercise. Um, you can eat a little bit more pungent foods. You can stay away from heavy, dampening, bogging you up types of foods. And then the other thing you can do, which relates back to the wood element, is to access those aspects of yourself, if you're not already, that are your creative side, um, your um like i mean yeah it's basically your creative side so it's it's the things that you know make you you and make you feel fulfilled in life and and so the liver aspect or the wood aspect of, of our bodies is related to creativity doing new things that growth um and that development of that and so it's the idea of like well some things that can cause liver cheese stagnation um is okay we talked about sitting too much not exercising enough Basically, too much stuff coming in and not enough movement, not enough outlet for things to go out. But also just suppressing your creativity can cause liver cheese stagnation. So let's say someone that knows they really, really want to do something with their life, but they're like, oh, I can't do that because money or something like that. Um, and they just keep pushing that off to the side. Well, they started out in a job they really enjoyed and it becomes mundane and it becomes difficult and it becomes hard. And they, they, they don't feel like there's any ability for them to express their creativity. So it doesn't have to be that you quit your job and become an artist and just, you know, change everything about what you do. But it's good that it's good if you know who you are as a person, what you in, what you really, what sparks that creativity for you. And what, like you could be creative in using Excel spreadsheet. You can be creative in um like you might be painting, it might be drawing, it might be something physical in the arts, it might be singing or, or dance or some sort of actual artistry like that. But it could be the artistry in like, you know, in, in, in your, you might work in retail and you might enjoy merchandising in the store, you might enjoy um, having a bit of autonomy to be able to go and, um, you know, do, do a creative project or do a project in your own way, which is utilizing your creativity. Now, if you're in a situation where that is really stifled and maybe it's because like your boss just doesn't see that 
the need that, that you have that need there. Maybe you've never expressed that need to do that. I would encourage you to express that need to your boss or to your supervisor, whoever is in charge of you, or if you know you might be even in your own business. I mean, I've been in there. I've been in that situation myself where um, I've been sort of stuck in doing a lot of mundane things in aspects of my business that really are. are, are it's not what I set out to do, you know, like I'm not, I don't love doing my bass. I don't love like entering data. I don't love doing those kinds of things. And if you're stuck for a long period of time and like, thank goodness I wasn't, but if you are, that can be very stifling and it can be very detrimental to you, to yourself. And because that, like, and then it can basically squash and constrain that liver chi more. And that can then make you, um, yeah, cause you what we call liver chi stagnation. So um, I hope this video has been useful for you. I hope that you found some good tips and ideas that you can help to help yourself um, maybe overcome the, the symptoms of liver cheese stagnation. This can accentuate or, or accelerate your, your treatment that you're having with Chinese medicine. Um, and if you haven't seen a practitioner yet and you need a referral to someone, um, then you can always send me an email. My email's in the description below. So thanks very much for watching. Um, you've watched it right to the end, so <laughs> congratulations. Um, and uh, if you haven't subscribed to the channel already, make sure you subscribe. I hope that this, this video has been really useful for you to um, help you. If you've got a question, if there's something I haven't covered, feel free to put your comment in the, um, in the description below. And um, hopefully we'll see you again on the next video.